It comes as a great surprise to the majority of people that massage is very possibly the most ancient of therapies, considering its rise to prominence almost as a lifestyle choice in the 21st century. Today, every beauty salon will offer a range of wonderful massages and you really can take your pick alongside manicures, pedicures and tanning treatments. But the healing properties of touch have been evident since the days of the earliest civilizations, and you only have to watch a parent comforting a crying child to understand how instinctive this reaction is. Even so, there are very few of us who treat ourselves to this beneficial therapy on a regular basis, and you'd be surprised how easy it is to come by. From kneading an aching muscle to rubbing a tired brow, massage is actually something we all do naturally and is a non-invasive way to gain pain relief from all manner of ailments. Headaches, minor injuries, insomnia and stress can all be relieved through massage and you don't need drugs or any sort of complicated medical equipment to get started. Just your own two hands. Touch is so important that lack of it can actually damage our health. We can become depressed and irritable and children deprived of touch at home can be more prone to illness and infections. Over 2,000 years ago, ancient civilizations recognized the importance of massage and in Greek and Roman literature, you can find many references to it. Julius Caesar was pinched daily to relieve his neuralgia and in the Odyssey, Homer describes how the war-weary heroes were rested and replenished by the use of massage. Moving on in time, the great explorer Captain Cook on his travels around the world recorded in 1779 that his painful sciatica was completely cured after 12 women from Tahiti massaged him from head to foot. So the benefits of this therapy have been known for a very long time. And interestingly, this was just three years after the birth of Per Henrik Ling in Sweden, the man credited with establishing the principles of the classic massage style we'll be considering throughout this programme. Ling's work focused on five basic massage techniques – pressure, friction, vibration, percussion and rotation – and was rewarded in his homeland when an institute was set up in Stockholm. Good news evidently travelled fast and by 1838 a further institute was opened in London and soon Pear Henrik Ling's techniques were being followed all around the world and this is where the reference to Sweden in massage actually comes from. Today, the therapeutic value of massage is becoming ever more widely recognised and whether you want to discover more about this most relaxing of treatments or simply pick up a few ideas for self-massage to help you through the most stressful moments of the day, finding out how and why massage works is a great place to start. You may wonder how touching and massage in the body can be such an important factor in maintaining good health and even helping to promote healing in the case of illness. A crucial element here will be the body's natural feel-good chemicals, endorphins, and their value to our well-being cannot be stressed enough.
as skin and muscles are gently kneaded, the effect on the nervous system, more specifically through the nerve endings, will stimulate the release of endorphins, helping induce relaxation, relieving pain and reducing the levels of the stress chemicals, adrenaline and cortisol. Furthermore, endorphins will help to counteract the most damaging effects of stress by slowing the heart rate, respiration and metabolism while lowering our blood pressure, which has to be a very good thing indeed. However, before we begin, there are just a few notes of caution to be aware of. If you have any concerns about whether massage is suitable for you, always consult your GP first and never massage where skin is inflamed or sore in any way at all. Also, we'll be touching on the use of essential oils in massage and if you have any health issues, it's always wise to seek professional advice before proceeding. That said, the first thing that will happen if you choose to begin by having a professional massage is a full consultation, which will of course highlight any areas that might be problematic. This will also help you to relax and feel comfortable with the person who is going to massage you, <laughs> as for many of us in the Western world, touch is a very personal thing and as part of a therapy can take some getting used to. Nevertheless, once tried, most people agree that the minor embarrassment they might feel is quickly overcome and the benefits certainly have the majority of us returning again and again. Here you see Elgiva Tiptaft, a very experienced masseuse, in consultation with Lucy, who is about to try out massage for the first time, and will be following their progress. Elgiva will establish an overall picture of Lucy's general health, and if you go for a massage, the type of questions you will need to answer usually relate to allergies, blood pressure, epilepsy, pregnancy and whether you have had any major operations or illnesses. Then there will be questions about how you function personally, whether you have any specific physical or emotional problems before considering such issues as digestion, menstruation and energy levels. Because Elgiva is experienced in the use of aromatherapy oils, after taking into consideration Lucy's requirements, she will mix a blend to use during the massage. The use of oil will really help the hands to glide over the skin and if this is something you decide to try out for yourself on your nearest and dearest, to begin with a light vegetable oil will work perfectly and pre-mixed aromatherapy massage oils are readily available if you want to experiment. But whatever you use, always remember to apply the oil to the palms first because it should never be poured directly onto the skin that is about to be massaged. And now we're ready to get started. Elgiva is using a massage couch, but if you're doing this at home, any flat, firm surface will work perfectly well. You'll need plenty of towels or sheets to hand, as only the area actually being massaged should be exposed, with the rest of the body kept warm and cosy. It can also be really nice to use soft lighting if you're doing this at home, and candles are wonderful, creating a perfect ambience, while relaxing music played throughout can enhance the experience still further.
There is no especially correct order for giving a massage and even the professionals will all have their own unique ways of working. However, the back is always a great place to begin where the connection between the giver and the receiver of the massage can be gently established. The first touches of the massage are really important and simply stroking the back will feel fantastic and aid total relaxation while Elgiva helps Lucy to clear her mind of all the thoughts that will have been occupying her. Using her hands side by side, Elgiva is stroking them firmly up Lucy's back and this mainly involves her palms. If you want to try this, remember to gently lean onto your hands to apply a steady, even pressure through the palms and push upwards as far as possible, encompassing the shoulders before moving gently down the sides. When you reach the waist, pull upwards and inwards and then stroke up the back again. You can do this up to 10 times and the fantastic rhythmic movement of stroking will form the basis of massage. It improves circulation as well as soothing the nerves and as long as you feel relaxed, you'll find the movements just flow. In fact, if you're ever at a loss for what to do next when giving a massage, just stroke. One other interesting point you'll notice as Elgiva works is that she'll try and keep one hand on the body the whole time she is working. Even when she needs more oil, she will still always try and stay in physical contact, enabling the energy to continue to flow unhindered. With the back nicely warmed up, Elgiva will concentrate her attention on the shoulders. Here, it really helps to think anatomically because this will immediately explain why the shoulder area suffers from so much tension and pressure. When you hear people say that they have the weight of the world on their shoulders, it is in fact a very apt description because the human head actually weighs between five and seven kilos, which physically will take its toll often resulting in people hunching their shoulders, making the muscles extremely tense. This is where a massage couch with a specially designed space for the face to sit in comfortably is extremely useful. But fear not, if you're trying this at home, rolling up a small towel to place under the person being massaged forehead will give you maximum access to this vitally important area. Watching Elgiva's technique, you'll see her using a kneading action known as petrissage, which is achieved through the movement of the hands, primarily the thumbs, lifting and kneading the muscle. It's wonderful for removing toxins from the muscles and you'll find plenty of granular-like crystals that need to be dispersed in the shoulder area. This is where lactic acid can really build up and this byproduct of the body converting blood sugars for energy is what can, in excess, give us cramp. And as anyone who has ever experienced painful cramp will know, massaging the affected muscle is the only way to get any much needed relief. 
You can see the close attention Elgiva is paying to the shoulder blade, and when you consider just how much work is done here, you'll appreciate why. The scapula is one part of the ball and socket joint that makes up the shoulder, the other being the humerus of the upper arm, while also being connected to the clavicle, which most of us know better as the collarbone. Consequently, there are an incredible 17 muscles attached to the scapula, which makes keeping it in full working order with maximum mobility absolutely essential. Now, obviously, when it comes to the shoulder, just like arms, legs, hands and feet, there are two of each to work on, so do remember to pace yourself to keep your energy levels balanced. You'll notice as well that as Elgiva works, Lucy's skin is taking on a rosy glow, which is precisely what she's looking for. This means that the massage is stimulating the circulation and in turn, this will bring nutrients to the organs, muscles and even the skin while dispersing unwanted toxins. And of course, now you know just how many muscles are involved, you can appreciate Elgiva's movements up and down the entire back. She's actually using the heel of her hand to massage the muscles on either side of the back, but you'll notice that she never applies any pressure to the spine itself, which is something you should never do if you're trying this out for yourself. Massage is, by its very nature, an instinctive process and Elgiva is attuned to picking up areas that need particular attention in any given individual. And while working on the back, once the shoulders have been massaged, the next area which carries an equal amount of tension will invariably be the buttocks. It may come as a surprise to learn, considering the main use of the buttocks today will be for sitting on, that this is where you'll find the most powerful muscles in the body, and a good massage really will help to release tension here. Stretching out these muscles can give relief to anyone suffering from sciatica, which is generally caused by the compression of the sciatic nerve. What you can see Elgiva doing at this point is using the heel of her hand to work to the sides of the spine, basically massaging all the important nerve endings. The nerves actually come through the spine, which protects the nerves of the spinal cord, and this is why pressure should never be applied directly to the spine. This area will actually take a lot of energy from the person giving the massage, and the use of the thumbs with some firm effleurage, basically long gliding strokes, will be very effective for releasing tension if the muscles are locally very tight. After paying attention to the buttocks, Elgiva returns to the rest of the back with more kneading and effleurage, working the entire area from the base of the spine to the neck. Changing the pace of her movements is also really helpful as it will increase focus on the body and it isn't only the muscles that require attention. She is also working thumb effleurage on the sacrum at the base of the spine, just above the coccyx, which just like the buttocks, is what we sit on, and this can release a huge amount of tension. Once the sacrum has been massaged, gently and slowly Elgiva is working her way up the spine, stopping between each vertebrae to open everything up. 
Whether you play sport, sit for long periods at a computer, or simply feel yourself getting tense as you dash about your everyday life, chances are your spine will become compressed. And this is why a really good stretch out will always feel fantastic. And what Elgiva is doing here will have equally as beneficial an effect. And as she works symmetrically out from the spine, those muscles will be beautifully relaxed, ready for her to complete this part of the massage with some lovely stretches between the hips and shoulder blades. After so much movement, she will also just allow her hands to rest on the sacrum and the back of the heart, and the stillness will help Lucy to feel comfortable and secure as Elgiva signals very calmly that she is ready to move on to the next stage, covering up the back but leaving the shoulders and neck exposed. As we've already discussed, the shoulders carry a great deal of our stress and the same is true of the neck, which can become very stiff and painful, as well as causing headaches. Extra work on this area specifically will be of great benefit and Elgiva is using her knuckles to put extra pressure on the sides of the neck to fully release all of the tension and using her thumbs to squeeze and pull the muscles that connect the neck to the spine. The joint where the skull meets the top of the spine in the neck is another real stress hotspot and massage in here will feel absolutely terrific. This next part of the massage may look a little strange as Elgiva applies more oil to her hands before using her fingertips to massage Lucy's scalp. However, for anyone who has enjoyed an Indian head massage, this will be nothing new. This therapy, just like acupuncture and reflexology, works on the principle of encouraging energy to flow through the body. And with Indian head massage, this is by accessing the body's chakras or energy centers in the head. The crown chakra is literally at the top of the head and massaging this part of the scalp is thought to unblock energy channels that have been constricted by illness or stress and this ancient therapy is becoming ever more popular. In the context of Elgiva's massage though, it's all about improving blood flow to the skin, in this case the scalp, and as she gently takes handfuls of hair to pull along its length, perhaps this is one occasion when East and West can coexist in perfect harmony. Now, as we saw just a little earlier, the shoulder works especially hard, being the pivot for the arm. And as Elgiva uncovers Lucy's arm and applies more oil, she will first concentrate on the scapula, gently bending the arm and resting it on the small of the back. This very useful position causes the scapula to rise and allow Elgiva to use her thumbs to reach the muscles. Working in this way will really encourage the release of toxins, being in such close proximity to the lymph glands that are located in the armpit area, which fulfil this vitally important function. With this done, the whole shoulder area is gently stroked before the arm is released back to a resting position as Elgiva rotates the joint to make sure everything is as flexible as it should be. 
While Lucy is still on her front, Elgiva will be able to work on her arm from the back. But she could, of course, massage from the front when Lucy turns over. And depending on your massage practitioner, this may be done either way. And if you're trying this at home, you can choose whatever suits you best, or even a combination of both. For some people, when they first take up massage, the arms can seem to present something of a difficulty, being smaller, bonier and rather awkward when compared to the rest of the body. Nevertheless, we do need to persevere as headaches, neck problems, sore shoulders and pain in the hands can all be caused by tension in the arms. You'll also find that while massaging the arms and hands, quite a bit of oil will be absorbed. So remember to keep applying it if you need to. And if you're using essential oils, this can be doubly beneficial. This will be especially true of the elbow, where the skin can be very dry. In fact, paying attention to the elbow during a massage will feel incredibly good because just like the shoulder joint, it does an awful lot of work and the tension can really build up here. And naturally, after working on the arm, the hand is the next logical point of focus. Wherever you happen to be, you can always provide comfort and warmth if you are able to offer a hand massage and is as nice to give as it is to receive. The hands and fingertips in particular are incredibly sensitive with so many nerve endings covering proportionally the largest area of the brain when it comes to registering sensation, which is why this part of the massage feels so good. Elgiva gently works the wrist to open up the palms and the thumbs and then moves on to massage each finger before giving it a little pull. This is fantastic for anyone who works long hours at a computer keyboard and all the techniques Elgiva has already been using stroking, kneading and stretching that are so key to this type of massage can be incorporated into a hand massage but on a much smaller scale. When both arms and hands have been massaged, there will just be a few moments when Elgiva will continue with her hold, but will become still before moving on to work on the legs. The legs have evolved to carry the whole weight of the body with the largest and strongest bones. The muscle groups are clearly defined and there are lymph glands located at the back of the knees and in the groin and massage will be really effective here if you gently stroke towards these nodes, dispersing toxins and creating a great sense of well-being. In point of fact, massaging in this way can actually help prevent varicose veins. But should you encounter them while giving a massage, you'll have to be extremely gentle with kneading, pummeling and any direct pressure on the veins avoided completely. Here you can see Elgiva using effleurage on the upper leg, kneading the muscles and with the long strokes she is making, including the foot. She's also paying particular attention to the calf, where an incredible amount of tension can build up and where the majority of us most commonly experience cramp. You do have to be careful working across the shin where there is little flesh, but if you pull from the shin with the heels of the hand, the fingers can work into the more muscular flesh of the calf. This will feel surprisingly soothing, and once you've acquired this skill, you can of course massage your own calf whenever you feel fatigue or tension building in it. With the growing popularity of reflexology, most of us are now well aware of the great health benefits of working with the feet. 
In reflexology, it's those all-important energy channels that are being accessed, with different points on the feet corresponding to every part of the body. But again, Eastern philosophy marries perfectly with our more Western approach to massage. Few of us realise it, but our feet actually contain nearly a quarter of all the bones in the body, some 28 in each foot. Laced with an intricate web of muscles, it's no small wonder how much our feet can ache when overworked. Ever since Leonardo da Vinci referred to the foot as the greatest engineering device in the world, we've all been looking for the best ways to take care of our feet, and regular massages are without doubt a step in the right direction. Elgiva is using thumb effleurage to open up the foot, then moves on to the sole and circles the toes before pulling them. It's also good to use the fingers to put pressure between the toes. And don't worry about tickling, just keep your touch firm and you shouldn't have a problem. Also, doing the foot massage after the leg will help, as ticklishness is usually a reaction to tension, and whoever is receiving the massage should be nice and relaxed by this point in the proceedings. When the foot massage is complete, it's a case of wrapping it in the towel to keep it warm and comfortable. Then, of course, you can move on to the other leg and foot. Rather than concentrate on this at the present moment, we'll speed through and pick up more leg massage when Lucy has turned over to allow Elgiva to work on the front of the body. Now, not surprisingly, Elgiva has had to apply more oil to the leg and is using effleurage to rub it in as she works all areas, including the top of the thigh, knee, ankle and foot. Concentrating energy into the shins through kneading is very helpful, particularly as those energy channels that reflexologists access in the feet actually continue up the shin, with those associated with the spleen, kidneys and stomach being found here. So as well as the great benefits of muscle stimulation and improved circulation, the massage is also energising these meridians as well. And logically, working upwards, the next area that will require attention is the knee, which carries a considerable amount of tension as we dash about our hectic 21st century lives. In fact, this joint is strengthened by the kneecap, which is a small circular bone with the specific purpose of helping the knee cope with the weight of the body. This will feel delightfully comforting and of course don't forget to work towards those draining lymph nodes at the back of the knee that will help to disperse the toxins that the massage will have released. Working on the upper leg is also very therapeutic, especially when you are using Swedish massage techniques. And for the person giving the massage, the extremely accessible quadriceps muscle at the front of the thigh will respond very well to stroking, kneading and pummeling. Massaging here can have the added benefit of toning the appearance of the upper thigh and when it comes to cellulite, stimulating the circulation in this way on a regular basis will definitely impart a very healthy glow.
and just as before, with one leg massaged, it's time to repeat on the other side. More oil will be required and there's another very good reason for making the person being massaged feel very secure and comfortable here. When the leg massage is complete, Elgiva wraps Lucy's lower body in towels before moving up to the abdominal area. For many people, this part of the massage is viewed with the most trepidation, but once they've given it a try, it's something the majority actually feel great benefit from. Exposing the abdomen can cause a sense of vulnerability, not to mention the self-consciousness generated by the lumps and bumps most of us carry here that we'd rather we didn't. But by first giving a beautifully relaxing back and leg massage before approaching the abdomen, the recipient should be quite at ease and not at all tense. Abdominal massage needs to be gentle, calming the nerves and stimulating the digestive system. As you can see, having gently started work on Lucy's stomach, Elgiva is applying oil and using circular movements in a clockwise direction. From the left, she is following the line of the intestine down to the colon and this will really help with digestion. And once the body has acquired all the nutrients it requires, the waste products need to be removed as quickly and as efficiently as possible for good health. And this type of massage will work wonders for anyone suffering with constipation. Moving upwards, Elgiva can now work between the ribs, where the intercostal muscles can get very tense when we become stressed. Not breathing properly is one of the first signs that we are suffering from stress, which is why the good old-fashioned advice for anyone panicking to take a deep breath is as valuable today as it ever was. Massage in this area will definitely encourage Lucy to breathe more deeply, as will working on the diaphragm area before progressing to the chest, another vital part of the body when it comes to respiration. Again, using more oil will help Elgiva to move her hands over the muscles of the chest and she also works gently on the sternum, which is where a great deal of tension will build up. This will open the chest right up, encouraging Lucy to breathe deeply and this isn't only for relaxation. Our blood needs a good, healthy supply of oxygen and the more efficient our breathing, the better our circulatory system will be able to function. Lucy is now perfectly relaxed as the massage session is drawing to a close and after Elgiva gives the muscles of the neck a good stretch just to make sure she'll be ready to massage Lucy's face. Massage can really work miracles for a tired face, giving a rejuvenated appearance as well as relieving tension headaches. And even better news for anyone wanting to learn the art of massage, you can practice on your own face before enticing others to allow you to try your technique out on them. 
One point to remember here, though, is to check whether the person being massaged wears contact lenses, because if they do, they should be removed before having a facial massage. After working on the chin to release the lower jaw, Elgiva gently presses with the fingertips to relieve any tensions within the smaller muscles of the face. Moving upwards, she then strokes the forehead, which will feel fantastically relaxing and pays particular attention to the ears. Just like the feet, you'll find reflex points here connected to the whole body, so again the benefits of the massage will be significantly increased. And that really is all there is to it. To conclude the session, Elgiva will hold her hands above the various parts of the body, creating stillness and a sense of utter relaxation, finishing with hand positions above the heart and the stomach. Lucy will need to take a little time out here before she gets up. Restored, refreshed and ready to return to whatever life may throw her way. When you've had a full body massage, like the one you've seen demonstrated here, you will be advised to drink plenty of water immediately afterwards and for the next few days. This will really help to flush through all the toxins that have been extracted from the muscles. And of course, we all should be drinking at least eight glasses of water every day anyway, something that often gets neglected. Some people do also find that they'll feel quite emotional after a massage, but this is nothing to worry about. And within a very short time, you'll be back to your normal self, only full of energy, calm and revitalised. Now there will of course be times when you simply can't find a gap in your schedule for a professional massage. But as it's often said that the time you most need to relax is when you don't have the time, Elgiva has devised a self-massage programme to share with Lucy for just such occasions. It won't be quite as good as having someone else massage you. You won't be able to switch off completely, but you'll know precisely where to target aching muscles and any areas of tension. If you're able, you can work on bare skin, in which case a little oil will be necessary. But if you're at the office or stuck in traffic, through your clothes will be absolutely fine. To begin with, make sure you're nice and relaxed, get as comfortable as you can and take three full breaths in through your nose and as you exhale through your mouth, allow the jaw to relax. Then lower your head onto your chest and gently, while breathing in, rotate your head, directing the right ear towards the right shoulder. Breathing out, bring your head back to the centre. Breathe in and turn the left ear to the left shoulder. Breathe out and return back to the centre. Repeat on both sides. And once you feel nice and relaxed, you can begin by massaging your head. 
Start by placing your fingertips at the front of the scalp and press gently, rotating in small circles, which will immediately feel extremely relaxing. Then work right around the hairline to the neck before continuing to the centre of the scalp. Make sure you cover the whole of the scalp with gentle rotating massage. You'll soon feel which bits you've missed. Come back to the centre at the front of the scalp and begin to use a gentle scratching action, moving around the hairline as before towards the neck and then up to the top of the head. Finally, go back to the centre front of the scalp and take a handful of hair in each fist. Pull gently. Continue all over, working around the hairline towards your neck and then to the top of your head, so your whole scalp has experienced a gentle pulling. By now you should be feeling nice and relaxed and the next area to focus on is the face where during the course of the day the tension will really build up. With the tips of your fingers begin in the centre of your forehead softly smoothing out the skin that may have become rather furrowed and allow your fingers to glide towards your temples. Rotate once at the temples and then repeat the whole massage process three times. It's interesting that most people start to go grey at the temples and this is because tension accumulates here, restricting blood flow to the hair follicles which results in a loss of colour. So not only will this feel good but might also delay the greying of the hair a little, which has to be an added bonus. Moving down the face, start by pinching along the eyebrows and when you're ready, gently press the lower line of the eye sockets. This will again help to release tension which builds up in and around the eye area. Then you can work all around the lower eye socket, from the nose towards the temples, using small pressing movements with your index fingers. Gently stroke around the lower eye socket and then drop down slightly lower, which will allow you to follow the cheekbones to the ears. Don't forget your nose either. Stroke the tip of it and stroke around the nostrils before pressing into the corners. With the tips of your fingers, you can then press from the centre of your upper lip towards the corners of the mouth, which will feel surprisingly nice, and then continue pressing gently around the lower lip. Change your action and pinch around the lower jaw, moving towards the ears, where you can gently knead, pull and squeeze the lobes and carry on around the outside of the ears, paying attention to where they join the face. At first this might sound a little strange, but remember all those reflex points in the ear and it really does feel very good. As you saw in the main massage that Elgiva gave Lucy, the neck can be a real problem area when it comes to stress and tension, and when you're looking at self-massage, it is at least fairly easy to access. From the bottom of the ears, rub the muscles that you will find to the sides of the neck with your fingertips, making small circular massage movements all around the neck towards the spine. Again, just like Elgiva did, pay attention to where the neck joins the skull by placing your palms over the back of your head and use your thumbs to massage along the joint.
Place your fingertips either side of your spine at the top of your neck and slide your fingertips away from the spine, moving towards the sides of the neck, following the hairline until your hands come to a natural stop. Then trace the line of the spine in your neck down to your shoulders, another area that will really benefit from self-massage. Start by taking a fistful of shoulder flesh in each hand. The heels of your hands sit above the collarbone and your fingers are facing behind you. Squeeze the flesh with your fingers, sliding over your shoulder muscle firmly, giving it a good squash, keeping the heels of your hands steady and then repeat this three times. Reach further down your back and let your fingers slide up either side of your spine towards your neck. Let each hand do this in turn, three times in all, as far down as you can go. With the fist of your right hand, hammer the top of the left shoulder a few times. Then, with the palm of the right hand, vigorously rub around the top of the arm before moving down to focus on the elbow and forearm. When you get to the wrist, take it between the thumb and the index finger and massage with circular movements along the wrist joint, loosening everything up. Next, you can concentrate on the hands and with your thumb, rub the inside of the palm, covering the whole surface and working into the gaps between the knuckles, squeezing the web between each finger. Starting at the base of the little finger, take it between the thumb and index finger and pull along the entire length, removing any tension and negativity. Repeat with each finger, doing them all twice, and then stretch your fingers as wide as you can. After all this intensity, give the whole arm a good shake, which will feel wonderful. And of course, you can then swap sides and repeat the whole process. And then you can move onto the upper part of your torso, patting your chest to wake it up. With your fists, rub up and down the top of the chest and around the sides of your ribs before moving down to the lower ribs. Rub your abdomen in circles starting above your navel, working clockwise, which will be great for aiding digestion. With your palms, ensuring that the fingers are facing downwards, rub your sides and circle down over the hips. Massage the small of your back in small circles, moving down over your sacrum and give that a good rub as you continue to work on the lower torso. Bring your fists around the buttocks, hammering those big sitting muscles, but not too hard, you don't want bruises, you're just trying to help loosen them up. These muscles work very hard and many of us hold tension here, which this technique will help to disperse. Then continue massaging up and down the upper leg a few times, between the hip joint and the knee, which will feel extremely revitalising. Moving down the legs, it's much easier to sit down so you can work on the knee at the front and then gently rub the back of it a few times. It's also great to massage up and down the front of the calves before giving the fleshy muscles at the back of the calves a good squeeze. There's not a lot of flesh at the back of the heels, but using a pinching technique here will again release any tension as you start work on the feet. 
Self-massage on the feet will feel absolutely fantastic and you can start by pressing along the inside edge with your thumbs. Knead all over the surface and give more attention to the areas that are most tense. You'll also feel those crystal-like granules here that massage disperses so well. Just as you did with the fingers, work on each toe, circling first in one direction, then the other, before giving a good pull to help release all the joints. With all ten toes beautifully loose and flexible, you can squeeze the whole surface of the foot and then finish with a flourish, closing your self-massage with a sweeping movement to leave you feeling perfectly relaxed and at peace, however trying your day might have been. And that's that. Hopefully, this introduction to Swedish massage will have given you a glimpse at the ways in which we can all use massage to improve our day-to-day -day lives. Touch is such an important part of human perception and well-being that is sadly so often neglected. And massage truly is one of the easiest ways to redress the balance.